Good morning, everybody. My name is Liska Stefko. I'm part of the clergy team here at St. Clement's, and it's my joy to be with you this morning to reflect together on this scripture. The Mount of the Beatitudes is a beautiful spot. It rises up gently along the northwestern shore of the Sea of Galilee. It's a lush green hillside covered with ornamental vines, with pink and purple blossoms in its sunniest spots, in patches of shade created by clusters of cypress and palm trees. It's the perfect place to get a bird's eye view of Jesus's ministry, all of the towns where he lived and worked, where he called his first disciples, walked on water and fed the multitudes, just to name a few. In our current OMG Tuesday series, we've been studying Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. And we began by admiring photos of this very spot where Matthew tells us that Jesus went up the mountain and then he sat down and began to teach. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted and so on. Matthew was always putting Jesus on top of a mountain. He wants us to make that connection between Moses receiving the law on Mount Sinai and Jesus who came to interpret and fulfill the law. So on this mountain in this beautiful scene from Matthew with these comforting words of promise, it's easy to imagine why people were captivated by Jesus's words and compelled to follow him. Now, when we hear today's passage from Luke's gospel, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, well, it starts off sounding a lot like Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, though it is a little more direct. Jesus is no longer talking about other people. He's saying, blessed are you, me. But then as he goes on, Luke takes us in a very different direction from blessing to woe, which makes me wonder what it is that Luke wants us to hear in Jesus's words to guide us for today. So let's take a look at how Luke sets the scene for this, the Sermon on the Plain. First, in the verses just before this passage, Luke tells us that Jesus went up the mountain to pray. And he came down and called his disciples, and it's with them that he came down and stood on a level place. He came down and stood on a level place. Curiously, this Greek word pedinos, or level place, it appears just once in Luke's gospel. But we hear it, or a related form of that same word used repeatedly in scripture by prophets like Jeremiah and Joel and Daniel. And it's used to describe places of idolatry, corpses, misery, and grief. This is where Luke has Jesus teaching in the level places of the prophets, the places of suffering. Next, Luke tells us a little bit more about who's there listening to Jesus. There were those from Judea and Jerusalem, likely Jewish, and others from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, likely Gentiles. This gives us a hint of the universality of Jesus's message that we find throughout Luke. And these weren't just passive spectators. These were needy people who wanted Jesus to heal their diseases and rid them of troubled spirits. We can imagine the chaos of the crowd pressing in, calling out and clamoring for him, trying to snatch just a bit of his power for themselves. This is not the peaceful scene described by Matthew with Jesus seated in the teaching posture of a rabbi with his voice projecting clearly over the heads of a polite audience. This was a mob scene where Jesus would have needed to stand up tall and shout to make himself heard. And then it's what Jesus says 
that leaves us maybe a little unsettled. Sure, there are blessings. Blessed are you who are poor or hungry or sorrowful or persecuted. But while Matthew gives us nine Beatitudes, Luke gives us just four. And then there are these other four statements that translated begin with the word woe, each a stark contrast to the words of consolation just before. Blessed are you who are poor, but woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who laugh, to you who are full, you who are popular. Again, Luke's great reversal of fortunes comes through loud and clear here. It's that same reversal that we heard in chapter four, when Jesus stood up in the synagogue in Nazareth, unrolled the scroll and read the words of the prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And this echoes the Magnificat, Mary's song of praise in chapter one of this gospel, which promises that the lowly will be lifted up while the powerful will be brought down. Luke would have us imagine that even before Jesus was born, he heard his mother singing these words of reversal. That's how central this theme is for him. I don't know about you, but I find Jesus's sermon on the plain to be a little less comforting than his sermon on the mount. And I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because I'm not sure where I stand in that crowd. Is Jesus looking at me when he says that part about the woes? After all, I have shoes on my feet and a roof over my head and food in my belly, which is unlike the reality of so, so many people in this world. And if I'm one of the privileged few, does Jesus love me any less for it? Or maybe the blessings and woes are unsettling because they raise a question about the connection between what we do and how God treats us. Am I blessed because I did the right things? And what does it mean if I'm not feeling particularly blessed? During a recent COVID outbreak in our large home, we needed to adhere to very strict isolation protocols for several weeks. People needed to stay in their rooms all day and eat their meals alone. It was really trying for everybody, most especially for one dear friend who is so inherently social and she thrives on connecting with others. Being stuck in her room was really hard on her. One day, as I walked past her room, I could hear her speaking quietly to herself behind the closed door. Did I do something wrong? When I was a little girl, my mother made me go to my room when I did something wrong. Did I do something wrong? Now, intellectually, she understood that she was being asked to stay in her room because of the virus, because Lots of people were getting sick very quickly, and it seemed we could pass it on to each other even when we were being careful. She knew that up here. But from a feelings perspective, she was giving voice to the powerlessness and the frustration that she felt. And as I overheard her, I felt both a twinge of impatience. No, of course not, we told you over and over and a pang of deep compassion. I know it feels awful and there's nothing we can do about it. It's easy enough to count our blessings when things are going well. When a new baby is born, when we get a raise, when someone we love comes through surgery or treatment safely but it's harder to count our blessings when we're in pain, when we lose our job, when someone we love dies. We know it's not true up here, but we can't help but wonder in here, did I do something wrong? In a 2016 
New York Times editorial, author Kate Bowler writes, blessed is a loaded term because it blurs the distinction between two very different categories, gift and reward. Blessed can be a term of pure gratitude. Thank you, God, I could not have secured this for myself. But it can also imply that it was deserved. Thank you, me, for being the kind of person who gets it right. When it comes to the Sermon on the Plain, I think this is a helpful distinction. When Jesus says we are blessed, I don't think he's talking about a quid pro quo, a reward for good behavior. I think he's talking about something far deeper. He's talking about our most basic notion of who we are in relation to God. I think Jesus is calling us to orient ourselves to God in such a way that even when we are in front of things that we cannot explain or control, even as we lament or labor or protest, we can still know God's presence and God's love. It's subtle, it's an inner movement from it's about me to it's about God. If you think this sounds like a tall order to manage all on one's own, I'd have to agree with you. But together, we can encourage each other in a way entirely impossible on our own. How do we hear these words of Jesus two years into a pandemic that has inflicted profound woe all around the world? What wisdom can we receive today as followers of Jesus in a time where being church has meant being church at home or church outside or church in the car? What does it mean to be church on the plain? First, Jesus is with us in the plainness of our everyday lives. Not just the mountaintop experiences, in this time when we've had precious few exciting new adventures or great celebrations, we've needed to practice seeking and finding God's blessing in the smallness of our daily lives. Second, at a time when we've all experienced hardship in some form, church can be a level place to come to hear Jesus and to experience healing a place where people of varied backgrounds and life experiences can come to share our burdens and our joys. When we gather, even online or outdoors, Jesus wants to show up and meet us wherever we are. Finally, Jesus teaches us that blessing is not so much an individual prize, thank you me for getting it right, as it is a gift, a gift to be shared. Blessing is to be shared in relationship with others, so often in plain and simple ways. I think of my friend closed up in her room that day, how I took a deep breath and knocked on her door and we had a little chat. And by the time we finished, we'd worked out a couple of questions that we could remind each other when we felt anxious. The first was, did I do something wrong? The answer, no, nobody did anything wrong. And the second was, are we okay? And the answer was, it's hard, but we're okay. Nobody did anything wrong and it's hard, but we're okay. And each time we repeated the same thing to each other and to others in the house, we breathed a little easier and we laughed a little more. Thank you, God. We need each other to stay humble in the good times and hopeful in the hard times. Jesus is with us, even in our plain times.
the church is a plane where Jesus wants to meet us. And we can share a blessing with others in plain ways. Thanks be to God. <laughs>